Hey guys, uh, welcome to Timber Timberwolves Talk number, I don't even know, what are we at, like uh, seven maybe, six? Probably around there, six or seven. Today's date is um, Monday, January 4th, um, coming off a few, um, might I say, tough games to watch <laughs> and tough games to be a fan of for the Timberwolves, but um, hey, we're still here to talk about it, so... Yeah, so I mean this this stretch of four games is it? We're on a four game skid, but yep. we talked a little bit about the Lakers game with Darren Wolfson in our last Timberwolves talk, so we're gonna leave that one be for now. So we're just gonna talk about the uh, Clippers, Wizards, and the recent Nuggets game last night and our thoughts on it because I know a lot of Timberwolves fans are extremely disappointed and upset at not only the team, but at Ryan Saunders in general. So we can hop into that a little bit. Yeah, we're not going to be, we're not going to be too hostile, but obviously we're, we're pretty upset too, because we, I mean, we've put a lot of time into covering this team and just, it's hard when we see performances like we've seen the last couple of days. Yeah. But hey, we're going to, we're going to try to, we're going to try to have a little positivity here. Just a little. For sure. For sure. So I think the first game, um, we'll go with the Clippers game. Yep. Honestly, it was a lot of the same from the Lakers game. Uh, I thought it was really poor defense. I thought shooting was not great. D'Lo didn't take control of the game whatsoever. That was, see, I think the point, a lot, one of the key points, of these three losses all by double digits is D'Lo not playing like a superstar, like not playing like the star we need him to play like. When Cat goes out, we expect D'Lo to score between 25 and 35, honestly, every night. I mean, that's just – that's what you have to do if you're a star on a team. You have to take the reins and take control. And I see more so of Malik Beasley and Jarrett Culver doing that right now instead of um, D'Angelo Russell. I even see Anthony Edwards taking the reins a little bit more. So if you're, if you're D'Angelo Russell right now, you got to think, like, you obviously have to play make, but you just, you got to get that shot dropping because these double digit losses are going to keep coming if you're not scoring 30 a game. And that, that's, that sucks to say, but every, every team has a star. And right now it, it's kind of like, we don't have like that one star in the team. Yeah. So with D'Angelo Russell, I mean, it all kind of, I feel like it's not that he's not getting shots up because he's getting a ton of shots up. It just feels like, when he does get a shot up, it's forced. And he just doesn't have a good balance of playmaking and getting up. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right. It feels all. It feels a little forced for him right now. And I don't know if that's because his shot's not falling the way he'd like it to, but I don't know. Yeah, he, I, I, I definitely feel you. I think a lot of the shots D'Angelo Russell takes are contested shots. And mm -hmm. he, that's okay because he, he does make a lot of those shots. But when they don't fall, that's when people start to wonder, like, oh, he's he's taking the worst shot in the NBA. He's taking a, deep, a contested deep two. And, like, do you really want to see him do that, or would you like to see him pass out of that and try to play make a little bit more? And it's it's tough because, obviously, his shot is not dropping the way he wants it to right now. And I, I think everyone knows that. And I think everyone everyone knows he's going he's gonna to get back on. He's going to get back on track. And it's it's going to take some time, but – that's the thing. It needs, it needs to happen pretty soon. Otherwise this thing is just going to keep going downhill. Yeah. I think, I feel... yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I, what I'm saying is I, we just need like, cause we start well, after that jazz game, like everyone was like, everyone was so hyped up and everyone thought like this was the year and it just yeah. takes, it's crazy how it just takes like four bad games for everyone to completely jump off the ship I without our best goes, player. Like, yeah. It goes to show how important Carl Anthony Towns is. Yeah. I and think, like, yeah, I, I think D'Lo as a player is a, you're getting the most out of him as a scorer. So when he's not scoring well, mm -hmm. he's not going to be effective on the court, really. He's a, he's a good playmaker, but his defense is just terrible. I, he's been getting caught on back. He's been getting caught on back cuts yep. every yeah. single game I've been seeing. He's just been overcommitting, 
on the defensive end. Yeah, he, he has a couple steals, but I think that that shows why the back cuts are happening is he's, he might be getting a little jumpy in the passing lanes. I think the reason, so through these past three games or through these past games, including the Lakers game, D'Lo has a minus 90 efficiency rating on the court. And that for you guys that don't know, that is terrible. So if I had a minus 30 efficiency rating in one game, that means when I'm on the court, it, it, I, I, isn't that saying like we're down I mean, 30 points? Yeah. So that's saying if, so while you were on the court, while you were on the court, you would have, if you played the whole game and you were, so just say, yeah, if the game was only when you were on the court, you would lose by 30 if you have a minus 30. Yeah. And that's, so, yeah, it's possible. Well, to have, a minus 90 is terrible. Oh, that's, that's horrible. That means, yeah, I can't even, that's so bad. <laughs> that's like in how many games three games that was in three games that was from the lakers to the um wizards game he had a minus 90 through those three games so he averaged a minus 30 yeah so that, yeah that's terrible you sometimes even when you when you lose you can look at like plus minus and sometimes players will have a like a, a positive even though you lose yeah and so like yeah, but if you have a minus 30, that's so bad. And we ended up losing all, most of those games by 20, 30, right? So, yeah, I guess it, I mean, it I, we're, like we say, we're not contributing these losses to D'Lo at all. It's just when you have a star player and he's not performing, obviously you're very likely to lose games. And I think mm -hmm. that's the tough part for a lot of these Timberwolves fans to swallow. And they're kind of – I think what's happening right now is these games – kind of show the true colors of the fans and that they're ready to like fire Ryan Saunders right now. And I mean, let's not, let's not get it twisted. I don't think he's the greatest coach of all time. I don't think he's ever going to be a, a great coach. And you know what, after the season, maybe it is time to hire a veteran veteran coach or promote Vanderpool. But at this time, like we won our first two games with Cat, So there's not, there's really nothing Ryan can do without his, without a top 15 player in the NBA, like your team's not get, like, it's really hard to make adjustments around not having cat. Yeah. For me, it's just, it's tough to see people just completely blameless on Ryan Saunders and not even, not even think about, yeah. The fact that Carl Anthony Towns is, Towns is out. If this was any other team, if this is the Warriors and their best players out, Steph Curry, no one is questions like, Oh yeah, Steph Curry's out. That's why they're losing. But with the Timberwolves, no one is giving like, that any thought they're just like oh you have D'Angelo Russell you should be fine but like they don't even look at how it affects D'Angelo Russell as a player not having cat because now all the pressure is on D'Angelo Russell and he need if his shot's not falling his playmaking isn't there either because they're not going to be they're not contesting his shot as much you know what I mean he needs to have both of his things clicking and they complement each other well yeah so I think that that was our little D'Angelo Russell and uh Ryan Saunders rant so I think next we well we can move into the the Clippers game was just a lot of the same from the Lakers team. Bad defense. They shot very well. There was really no one who could stop Paul George. It's it's just the way it is. Um, when we don't have any when when a Kogi's out, that's tough because yeah. he's he's our go to defender. And when you don't have someone that can guard Paul George or Kawhi Leonard, and Kawhi didn't even play that game, but when you don't have someone who can guard Paul George, he's he's gonna drop over 30 on you very easily it's just he's a professional scorer that's what's going to happen but mm. moving into the Wizards game this was one of the worst Timberwolves games I think I've ever watched in my life this is an 0-5 Wizards team that's coming into our building down one of the best point guards in the league in Russell Westbrook so all we have to worry about is pretty much Bradley Beal yeah. and what happens Bradley Beal scores 31 on us in three quarters it's just, I mean, yeah. you can't – he's a great – he's one of the best scorers in the NBA, and much credit to him because I wanted him in the offseason. He's a very good player. But come on, man. If he's scoring 31, there's most definitely players on our team that can match that and another player who can – like, I, did, I don't know. Who um who is guarding him? I, I really – I think Malik was on him a little bit, and I think Jarrett Culver kind of took the reins after that. But yeah, just how, how his is Malik dropping? How's Malik saying he's going to be first team all defense and then do that? 
I mean, I, I'm, I'm the Bradley Beal thing is people scores like him. Like I think Devin they're going to get their does it a lot too. They're going to, they're going to score, but like they're, even if you play perfect defense, yeah. they're going to do some, something crazy and put a bucket in. That's, that's fine. I, I thought Malik put him into some, some bad shots. I, I think they should have had Jared on him the whole game just because Jared's mm-hmm. a little bit longer and a better defender. But, yeah. So yeah, I guess with those volume type scorers, I mean, so yeah, so with Bradley Beal, when you're going up against the game plan going in that game is all right, Beal's gonna get 25. It doesn't matter who we put on him, how we play defense, he's gonna get 25. Yes. And that's okay. 25 but points. Let's, but let's make him score only 25. Yeah, and if he gets 30, fine. But that's only 30 points. Cause if he's and if he's the only one that's scoring and he's only getting 25 points, you're gonna win that game. You have to make other people beat you. And the problem is we let other people beat us. Yeah, we let – I think the, the worst part was we let we let Thomas Bryant and Denny Avdia pretty much do whatever they wanted in that game. I, mm-hmm. I don't think – like, we're just – we're just the thing that hurts is we were a more talented team than that Wizards team, and that win would have been, like, very good for us as we would yeah. be 500 right now. I think the whole goal without Cat is to stay five – like, if we can be 500 – Without Carl Anthony Towns, I think we can make the playoffs. Because then once Cat comes back, we're gonna have a winning record, and then we can right. maybe sneak in. But if we're going under 500 without Cat, it, our our playoff chances are very grim. Because the Western Conference, all those teams in it are gonna have winning records. It's not like the East where you're gonna have a losing record for the seventh and eighth seed. There's no. every single team in the West that makes the playoffs is gonna have a decent winning record. So when you lose to the Wizards, who just absolutely score on you at will and you can't score back on them it's it, i mean yeah the scoreboard looked a little closer than it was it was 130 to 109 but they were almost beating us by 40 at when they were actually had their starters in at the end of the third like it's it's just not acceptable even without your best player to lose by 40 to the worst team in the nba yeah for um like for me it was hard even because the um if I'm not mistaken, the college football was on, the playoff was on that night. Yep. And I was watching that with my family and I was trying to get them to switch back and forth to the Timberwolves game. And it was working for a little bit, but at a certain point, my family's just like, no, we're not watching this crap. Like this is <laughs> like, I'd much rather watch a blowout college football game than watch the Timberwolves just get obliterated by the worst team in the NBA. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. I kept also, another thing I kept noticing is like Rui Hachimura. Yeah, he, he's a good player, too. I, yeah. I'm fine if Rui beats us. But he kept a, getting, like, he kept getting the weirdest mismatches. He would get, like, Ricky Rubio on him two times down the court. Like, yeah. how how do you possibly allow that mismatch to happen back-to-back possessions? I agree. I agree. I, I saw D'Lo a lot on Thomas Bryant, too, in the post. Yeah, like, what I are think, these matchups? So I think what I got from these few games is the lineup that works best is the one where no one is playing out of position. When you have, I'm just saying, like, D'Lo and Ryan Sauters got together and kind I think it was after the Wizards game, actually, and just wanted to simplify the offense. And he, mm-hmm. D'Lo went to John Krasinski of the Athletic and said, like, of course, Jarrett Culver is not going to be able to defend the four position. He's a shooting guard point. He's a shooting guard and a point guard. I mean, like, <laughs> you can't just ask someone who has been doing something their whole life and as a professional at it to go guard a six foot eight, 250 pound. Just get a damn man. four. Just get a real four. That Like why? It's not that hard. Everyone is saying the same thing. And we've been saying this since the first game of the season. We need a four. And I don't know if it's a, if it's a, it's like a ego thing. If you can't bite the bullet and just be like, all right, I was wrong about Wancho. Jake Lehman, he's probably more of a three even. He's not even a four. He's not even a Jake three. Lehman, Jake Lehman looks good at the three. Is he's a three. Because like, he's a three, yes. So, like, why can't you just get a four? It's not that hard. There are so many, not even, I'm not even saying. We have a, like, we're not even going to, we've brought up Rodney Hollis Jefferson not so much. Him. And it's, and not even him. There's other fours out there that are, like, Frank Kaminsky is now a free agent too. Sign him. Like, it's, Just sign somebody. Like, just you give someone a shot. Like, you don't, like. I'm sure we even have a guy in the on the Wolves G League team that is a four at heart. And like we don't need to keep doing these small ball lineups. We don't like just get a yes, damn four. I agree. And I think the four that so me and Peyton were talking about this before we got on here. Jared Vanderbilt in the few minutes that he's played 
has a higher player efficiency rating than LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo. You, I don't understand. Every time he comes on the floor, he does something positive on the offensive and defensive end. And it's the same with Jaden McDaniels. Those are two true fours just stashed on our bench that we at least let – everyone's saying start Vanderbilt and stuff. I don't think you have to start Vanderbilt. Oh. You just have to give him good minutes. Like, he's not going to thrive if you play him three minutes in the garbage time. Give him 15 minutes of actual game time and let him see how he does. And if he proves himself yet again, plug him in. Cause we, there's no one at the four right now that's benefiting us. Yeah. So we could say, we could say, okay, so maybe he's only has such a high PER because he's playing garbage time or because he's not getting his, as many minutes. So it's like, kind of like, it's kind but of, he's, the thing is it. he's doing, if you, if you're giving someone five minutes a game, expect them to and if you get only five minutes a game this is just a life lesson in general for basketball players if you get only five minutes a game make the most of your five minutes and that's exactly what he's done every time yes and that's why the fans I think have kind of been falling in love with him as a player because he you can tell he actually cares like some other some of the other guys like we're down by 30 and they're just kind of like just like, all right, let's get out of here. Let's get to the next game. But that guy, he's fighting. He's, he's given us some fight. And that's when you're in a losing situation as a team and as a fan base, that's all you can ask for. And he's given it his all. He's diving on the floor. He's playing full court defense. He's doing everything. Like the worst that can happen if you play him more minutes is he doesn't play that well. And then, you well, know, honestly, the worst that could happen is it just stays the same because there's we're at rock bottom right now for yeah. the four position. Yes. And I feel like if you give him more minutes, he's not going to blow the game for you. All he can, it's all, it's a win-win. All he, like, all he can do is, all he can do is play good. And if yeah, he plays the, bad, the then moment, you're like, yeah, we're right. Exactly. The, mo- the moment I fell in love with him was when it was, it was in the Lakers game. We were getting blown out yet again. And he just picks up, he, every single time LeBron touched the ball to bring it up, he picked him up full court. Yeah. Like that who's going to do that? Like, yeah, this just awesome. shows you you want it. Yeah, and like if you're if you have a chance to guard LeBron James, why wouldn't you pick him up full court? Why wouldn't you be like, oh yeah, I guarded LeBron James, and I picked him up full court every time, and I got him pissed off. Like, that's awesome. That's what we want. And yeah, so like we already have these fours. Why not give him a shot? That's what I'm, I'm not saying. Th- and I think Jane McDaniel's is one of those players that needs to be on the court to develop. If he's just if he's just in the 13th roster spot the whole game, you give him a minute. To, like I was so mad last game last night when we played him only one minute against the nuggets and he comes out it was it was 50 seconds and he scores as many points he scored five points like what like i don't i don't know that's that's what you call taking advantage of your playing time but kind of off topic i mean yeah i think jared vanderbilt should get more minutes i don't see a reason why ryan saunders wouldn't give him at least at least 10 to 15 minutes a game. Like just give him a little bit more minutes to see what he can do in actual against the starting lineup. Yeah. And I'm, and by saying we have weapons on the bench and stuff, I'm not saying don't get a a new four. We need a new four. Yeah, we do. But if we're going to be stubborn about it and be like, no, the guys we got are the guys we got. We signed Wancho to a huge deal. Like we don't want to bite the bullet on that. We got rid of Rondé Hollis Jefferson. We don't want to be the bigger guy and sign him back. Like, if you're going to do that, fine, but at least play other fours. Don't be playing Jared Culver at the four because he's not a four, and that's going to make everyone look bad. And touching on that, I think D'Angelo Russell, man, I think he needs to be the one. I don't think he plays well at the two. I honestly and I was I just about to go into that. I think because I was talking about lineup changes, like you cannot have – I it just doesn't work. They both play terrible together. Whenever Ricky Rubio and D'Angelo Russell are on the court together, that is when – shit hits the fan like every single time like we are terrible when those two are on the court together and it's because neither one of them can make a play without the ball it's just it's just not how they op- it's just not their players player style and that's okay but ryan has to be smart enough and i think he finally learned last game that they cannot be on the floor together and like we knew this coming in though because they're both yeah, they both need the ball. Ricky, he's not a scorer, but he needs the ball in his hand to facilitate for others and get the offense going. He can't play off ball. No. D'Angelo Russell, he needs the ball in his hands to come off screens and create shots for himself and others. But there's not two balls at the same time. We saw this problem in uh, Houston with Chris Paul and James Harden. I mean, it's not this. It's it's basically the same thing, just on a lower level. 
because you had Harden, who need, Harden and D'Angelo Russell, pretty similar. They need to, they need the ball in their hand to score. CP3 and Rubio, pretty similar. Like they need the ball in their hand to facilitate to others. And I'm not yeah. saying that Ricky Rubio is as good as Chris Paul, but I'm saying it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. And Chris Paul is just a Chris Paul is an amazing Ricky Rubio is what he is. And James yes. Harden is is the best volume scorer there is in the NBA. You're yep. not going to find someone who's a better scorer than James Harden. Exactly. Besides so, maybe Kevin Durant. Yeah. So we saw that happen in in, uh, in Houston and it just it's not working for us here. And we just got to realize that we got to be OK with that. And it's OK having Ricky come off the bench. We don't need him. Yeah. So. And I. I think my optimal lineup at the moment, I think this lineup would do the most damage and I think it would, it would just work the best. I think at, as of right now, I think D'Lo at the one, Mm -hmm. Malik at the two, Mm -hmm. Culver at the three. I I hate to say it, but if they're not going to give Vanderbilt any minutes, then Wancho's going to have to play the four and then Nas at the five. I don't know why that hasn't been a starting lineup yet. I don't know why, I don't I just don't know why he hasn't done that yet. And then on the bench, I think Anthony Edwards and Ricky Rubio work really well together. Yeah. I think they need to take advantage of that more because every single time Anthony Edwards and Ricky Rubio are on the floor, Ant-Man gets good shots. He also gets to drive a lot because they, they give him the, the, the key to the offense on the bench. I, sure. I, I don't know why the lineup hasn't been used, but I think that's what we have to roll with next game. Yeah, and especially when they're saying like, start Anthony Edwards. I don't think we need to start Anthony Edwards. I think he needs to get more minutes, but I'm completely fine with Edwards coming off the bench with that second team. And yeah, when he's, when he's on the floor with that second team, it's his offense. I think that'll be more beneficial to him than having him play next to Malik and D'Angelo Russell the whole game. I think. Yeah. So. Cause I think, I think Malik, Malik right now is the, is the star on the team. And it's, it stinks to say that having D'Angelo Russell, but Every time Malik touches the ball, something good happens. And he's mm-hmm. he's just that guy who's gonna he's gonna hit that shot that you need him to hit. And he's also gonna be aggressive and he's gonna he's, he he has a lot of heart. I think he's the player right now that cares the most about this team. Him and yeah, yeah, for sure. He um yeah, he's kind of got that just like alpha dog mentality. Like he doesn't care. He if he's he doesn't care if if he takes a bad shot or something, if someone gets mad at him, he doesn't care because He's gonna give it his all, and he he might take a few bad shots here and there, but at least he's at least he's giving it his all, you know. Yeah, and I think one thing that he really worked on this off season was driving, and he looks really good actually taking it to the cup. Like he he is that he's that in and out scorer now. He's the three level scorer that we like that he could be, and that's kind of I I don't know. I think Malik Beasley, honestly, I I'm not saying it's this year, but he's definitely he could definitely be an all-star man from the, from the way he shoots that ball to the, to the intensity he has. And he's, he's far more athletic than people give him credit for. He's thrown out some crazy dunks this year. I, I think Malik Beasley has that in him to be that. Yeah. I think, I think Malik Beasley is, yeah, I a hundred percent agree with you right now that Malik Beasley is the best player on the team right now. Yeah, man. I think I, I'm not giving up hope on D'Angelo Russell. I think he's a, I think he's a great oh, basketball yeah. player, and I just think he just needs to get more comfortable with this offense. Like we forget, dude, he didn't play many games with us last year. No, there's there. This group is so new to each other. Right when they were starting to hit their stride, last because they got about 14 games last year without Cat again. So this is kind of like the same yeah. situation, and. um they got 14 games and then COVID hit and they haven't, they weren't able to play. Like people don't understand. They weren't able to practice with each other. They were, it was banned. They could not be in the same gym, could not have team activities. So this is, this is like a continuation of that, but starting all over again. So I think for D'Lo, it's a little tough because he doesn't know his players tendencies completely yet. He's still connecting with them and D'Lo is going to, he's going to turn it back on. I, I think he's going to still this year score 23 points per game. I think he's going to be absolutely fine. It's just finding his shot right now. If he could get a couple more, like, because whenever he has an open three, I've been noticing he, he usually knocks it down. Yeah. But whenever he's contested, it's, it's just, it looks like a, he just hasn't found his contested shot yet. And that's the shots he takes. And I mean, it. see, the thing is with D'Lo, he doesn't, he doesn't shoot free throws. So that's a little, 
it's people can limit your game if you don't that's just a whole nother aspect of your game they can completely shut down if you're not taking it to the rack hard enough and i think yeah. but i mean that's it's it's who he is you can't expect him to completely change his game i mean and <laughs> like it's it, it would be nice if he could make it to the free throw line a little bit more but we know who he is he's, he's not a guy who's gonna he's he's gonna try to draw a couple fouls but he's not going to go to the free throw line a ton yeah and that's another yeah so how many i think i saw something where he shot like six free throws this season so far or something crazy like that i don't know i don't know and what he has is. not shot well when he goes to the free throw line it was a huge issue with him i saw last game he shot two free throws and he missed them both <laughs> against the jazz he missed two big free throws in crunch time i i don't i don't know i i think that's just like like I said, I think it's just him not finding his groove yet. Like it well, happens. Do you think that so when he was in Brooklyn and stuff, did he not get to the free throw line much, or was that? No, he. So it's, it's, it's kind of game. just been a thing his whole career. He just doesn't. He 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 he's like Kawhi, but Kawhi has that inside game. Kawhi loves the mid range shot, and that's what D'Lo loves too. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a lot of people like to shy away from the mid range shot because they're like layups or threes. Like a lot of teams don't even want you to take a mid-range shot because it's either layups or threes. And I think we kind of were going in that direction, but now that we have D'Lo, it's going backwards. And I don't see anything wrong with that. I think a lot of great players have great mid-range shots. It's a, it's a lost art in the game. And I mean, the the debated greatest player of all time is the best mid-range shooter of all time. I mean, Michael, Michael Jordan lived in the mid-range. Exactly. There's nothing wrong with the mid-range jump shot. And with D'Angelo Russell, I think it's all just going to, it's all going to start coming together. And it, it's a confidence thing. It really is a confidence thing. If he starts knocking these free throws down, then he's going to want to get to the line a little bit more. He might drive a little bit harder. But if he's missing these free throws, I feel like he's going to be a little more timid on getting to the line. He's not going to be wanting to shoot as many free throws. And once everything yeah, and saw, starts falling. Yeah, and I saw him and um, Anthony Edwards um, right after the Wizards game. They went out and – had a shooting practice for a while, just those two. And I think that's like, I like, you like to see that as a fan because it shows, you know, they, they know what they need to work on. And I think, I don't know. I really like seeing them out after the game, putting some shots up because it shows they care and they, they want to get better. Yeah. I think, I don't, I, I don't know. I think this next Nuggets game, this Nuggets game that we just played last night, obviously it was still, there was a lot of things that went wrong, but the first three quarters, we were in that game. Like we were, we were winning going into the fourth quarter. And there's a lot of good things that a lot of players did. Like I thought Nas Reed was perfect on the inside. He played, first of all, I don't know why he didn't start um, over Ed Davis. I just, <laughs> I didn't get, uh, Jokic was going to abuse whatever center we put on him. So why would it not just be Nas for scoring purposes? But right. I think Nas did great on the inside. He he's been really good in Cat's absence, actually. I also think Malik Beasley did his thing again. You know, he put up tw- um, I think it was twenty something points. Twenty five last maybe? night again. Twenty five, yeah. And I thought Jared Culver had a great game too, twenty points. And he he also just played good defense. the The issue that lied within this game was we did not have a fourth quarter closer. Like no one was stepped up. No one stepped up. Like Malik was still hitting his shots, but if if the Nuggets had that, Jamal Murray dropped thirty six. He he closed us out in the fourth quarter. Right. He he took control and he 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 made shots. And you know we're not going to say that. It just D'Lo's not a great defender, and they took advantage of that. And that's you know props to the Nuggets. They have they have really good two really good stars. They probably. I mean, they made the Western Conference Finals for a reason last year. It's it, They're a great team. But honestly, the way the third quarter went, we outscored them by, I think, nine in the third quarter. We had the momentum going into the fourth quarter, and I, I would have really liked to see us win that game because I thought everything was coming together in that third quarter. I thought this is where – this is the point where the season turns around. And then a lot of the same stuff happened. We gave them easy shots. We – we let them back cut us and played soft mm. off the ball. We didn't, we, our offense looked stagnant. Like it, a lot of the same stuff happened. It was just disappointing. Yeah. So I saw a quote by uh, D'Angelo Russell. He said that it was a weird, it was a really weird quote. I'm not going to lie. He said like, um, 
they got to get we have to have good like something about like before we can win games we have to like get good at losing games or something weird and how he said that few games before those are bad losses but this loss to the nuggets that was a good loss like you can you can pull a lot of positives out of that game yeah and it's not you you're crazy to to think that we can go from a 30 point loss to the wizards to beating the nuggets like it's going to it's going to take it's going to take a few like good losses before we can get back into the winning column and i think against the nuggets i agree with D'Angelo russell that was a good loss we showed a lot of positives that game and it's it's starting to trend in the right direction. I I think we're going to be okay. I think so. It's only yeah, four I, games. I agree, and I think it was really good to see. I think it was the start of the third quarter. D'Lo took over. He scored like the first eight points, I believe, and he looked he looked like he was back in the form. He looked like yeah, this is finally where he turns it on. And then in the fourth quarter, it was a lot of the same bad shot bad shot selection. I I mean, but. I don't know. I, I I think he'll he'll get it down eventually. It's just once once he gets hot, I think that's when the team really takes the next step forward. Because until then, it's going to be hard for Malik and Jarrett Culver to propel this team by themselves. I think we need we need D'Lo to be the best player on the team. Isn't it kind of crazy how the narrative on Culver switched already? Now we, now everyone's kind of kind of on the Jarrett Culver train. And yeah. in the off season, everyone was just, oh, this guy. Big, he's just, bum. he looks so much more polished at, it's just, it's incredible what one season did to him. Like, I don't know what he did this off season. I don't know if he worked on his shot a little bit more. Or the free throws look better. I mean, he still has a little hitch in it, but they're dropping at least. I think he, he just looks like he can get to the basket whenever he wants. That's the big thing with him. Like he, mm-hmm. his scoring on the inside is incredible this year. Dude, he's so lengthy. How 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 tall is he? I think he's only six foot six, but I think his wingspan is pretty big. Yeah, he's yeah, he's got he's just he probably could add a few more pounds of weight, but I think he um yeah, a lot of positives from from Culver. So let's just let's just set the record straight. We are um we're still here for Ryan Saunders. I think as of, as of now, I'd I'd like to see him coach a few more games with this unit because I don't like he was too people forget he was two and oh like when we had our normal team with Josh I, we we can talk about Josh Kogi after and the effect he has on the team too because it's giant but we have to give Ryan Saunders more than four games without two of his best players because that's losing two of your best starters is it's detrimental. It's detrimental to the team because you have to bring in two bench players. So I mean, I'd like to see him get Cat back and see what he can do this season. And you know, if we get Cat and Josh Kogi back and it's more of the same, it, the offense looks bad. Yeah, it's I I. But we have to see first. I kind of I, I I like I like making these comparisons. So like, let's just compare it to that Warriors team. And I don't know what year it was when they had KD. Yep. Right. So so. What's so our best player is Cat. So say their best player was out. That's either um, KD or Steph. Who, who would you say their best player was? KD? I mean, on that team, it was definitely KD, yeah. All right, so KD's out. He's injured. And then our fourth best player in our starting lineup was probably a Kogi, right? Maybe even third, yeah. Fourth or third. So that's Draymond Green is out. So the Warriors without KD and Draymond Green – and that was the same exact – they lost to the Raptors in the finals because they're not going to be – like, if you take take away two of your biggest pieces and two of your biggest – besides just being great players, those were the two leaders. on. Like, Josh Kogi is a huge leader on this team. And Cat yeah. in itself, just your, your best player is always going to be your leader. So that – like, obviously you have them on the bench, but they're not out there. Yeah, you can't – you're taking away two starters. I didn't even, like – I didn't even think about that. Okogi is a starting, he's a starter on the team. You can't expect the team. You can't expect the team to go out there and win without their two start, two of their starters. That's like, especially right away. I mean, maybe after they've built more against, two, against some great, team, like let's not, <laughs> at least these losses were to the Lakers, the Nuggets, Clip, the Clippers. Like, those are like top, top are, five teams. Those, are to- those, those <laughs> could possibly be the top three teams in the East this year. West. I, I get that we lost or the West. Yeah. I get that the Wizards are bad, you know, yeah, but that's, that's just a byproduct. Yeah. But you you see the Mavericks, they or the the Clippers lost to the Mavericks by 
what were they down by 50 in the first half? Yes. That happens. Teams have bad games. That Wizards game, that was a bad game. We're not saying that wasn't a bad game, but we're also saying that we're these other losses are against phenomenal teams. And we played the Nuggets pretty – we played them great until the, until the start of the fourth quarter at, without two of our starters. And if you're telling me you have zero optimism – after that, you that is ridiculous. You you're not a true fan. You got to have, especially with the Timberwolves, as a Timberwolves fan, you have to have a lot of hope. You can't and be a Timberwolves thing, fan without a lot thing. of hope. I I like going just on these like inst- these recent Instagram posts by the Timberwolves, and I I I, well, I I just do it, but I don't like it because it's just so much negativity. I'm like, guys, like we're without like you got to factor in all of this. We were two we were two and zero, and we beat one of the best teams in the West in that series. Like we, that game against the Jazz, I thought we controlled that entire game. Like, we were up by like almost twenty in that game mm. until Donovan Mitchell finally caught a little bit of fire, which he's supposed to. He's a t- he's a top fifteen player in the league too. I mean, it's just like if you have no like everyone in the comments, fire Ryan Saunders, like Ricky Rubio sucks, D'Angelo Russell trade. I mean, like guys, this is what are we six games into the season? <laughs> <laughs> Calm down. Once we get Kat and Kogi back, we'll be. I think we'll be just fine. And honestly, I kind of have a big prediction for this next Nuggets game. I think there's a there's a possibility we win this Nuggets game and get this thing back on board. I think I think we're gonna have. I because for it's the second game. We we know now. We know now what they're gonna bring. I mean, they know what we're gonna bring also. But we played pretty bad. So like, Delo's breakout game is gonna be in the next. I think it's going to be next game, but it's at least going to be in the next two or three games. And once D'Lo, Malik, and Anthony Edwards all are on the same page and clicking, that's that's, that's a trio true. in itself, even without Cat. Right. And Jared have- Culver's just said a great piece. Yeah, dude. I'm, this, this, uh, this, this talk is getting me a lot of optimism, actually. And I just – yeah, it's frustrating how fast these fans and, like – because – it's hard being a Timberwolves fan. We get it. We get it. It's hard. And especially with these, with every single year you're coming in, oh, this is the year. This is the year. But and guys, start- this actually, this is through like, through like 10 years of watching this team. Like this is the best team we've had in 10 years, like without a doubt. And even with that Jimmy Butler year, we, I think we have more young talent than we did that. Year. Like we, mm-hmm. that was just two play. That was just Cat and Jimmy. Now we actually have, five to six players that are really pretty good at NBA players. Yeah. I just, we, what we have to do is we have to figure out the power forward position that that's something that is, is kind of unacceptable to be a professional team and just not, not be- have a, like every team, at least in the NBA has one guy at a position at every position. Yeah. That's a, that's a good NBA. Play. Like they are, good enough to be in an NBA starting lineup. The Timberwolves at the moment don't have, like they don't have a player that's an NBA starter at the four. And Rondé Hollis Jefferson, what he gave us was at least defense. Like that's mm-hmm. at our four position. I don't care if you can, honestly, I don't care if you can shoot threes. I care if you can play defense at the four because Cat's not the best defender. So if we you can help Cat play defense at the yep. four, you're good in my book. And that's exactly what Rondé did. And we let him go. We let, we let the guy go. We let him go, man. And uh seems like we're not going to try to get him back per, uh, per Darren. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I guess going on to another subject was the Akogi thing. I think people really underestimate the value of Josh Kogi, even though he's not the best scorer. I mean, he's, he's possibly an all defensive first or second team type wing defender. Every single game, Think about his task. Like, if you had to guard Kawhi, LeBron, Jason Tatum, if you had to guard those guys night in and night out, would you be really good on offense too, or would you focus you on trying to stop those guys? You don't need him to be, because the thing is, everyone, a, a a base level basketball fan only looks at scoring, and they think that as, they they just look at players that base off their scoring. But you can't have yeah. every player score twenty five a game. That is impossible on a team. You yes. need a guy that's going to go out and get rebounds. You need a guy that's going to go out and play defense. And by doing that, when you have a guy that's going to focus on defense and guard the best player, 
one through four, whatever position that is, like Josh Akogi, it lets a player like D'Angelo Russell not have to guard the best player. So then he can focus more on offense while Akogi is focusing more on defense. That's how it works. You and I guarantee, just... I guarantee you guys, I guarantee you that Jamal Murray would not have scored 36 in that game. Josh Akogi would have held Jamal Murray to about, it would have been under 25 points. And that's just, see, but that's, that's the thing. That's 10 less points on the scoreboard. That's what Josh Kogi does. He takes, he takes away other teams points. He takes away like, other points. Like exactly. you having that guy on your team that can guard, there's not a lot of Josh Kogi's out there. And I know that sounds silly, but there's mm-hmm. not a lot of guys who are that good of a wing defender. And that's, that's a huge loss to our team. And he went down with that hamstring injury, I think against the Lakers. And that, that was partially why we got blown out that game in the third and fourth quarter. We didn't have that guy that could guard LeBron. And I mean, I don't, yeah, it's like losing Cats one thing, but also losing Josh Kogi is the other reason that we're kind of struggling on the defensive end. So I think those two losses, honestly, were the probably the two worst players we could have lost. And <laughs> you took away two of your most valuable players to Ryan Saunders, and you expect him to just – be perfect and keep the ship moving from two and zero. It's going to take them some time to adjust this lineup. I hundred percent agree. Another thing I, I kind of want to touch on is I, so I've seen this with young teams in the past and it's kind of reminiscent of a young team that doesn't have the chemistry, but has a lot of talent. Yeah. We start every game slow. Every single game we get, we dig a hole. We always dig like a 10 point hole. The other team always comes out shooting the lights out Yep. And we always dig a hole. We need to we need to find a way to start out strong because then you don't have to you don't have to build your way back. You don't have to have these comebacks because you're yes. already in the game. And like I, I agree, I agree 100 percent with you. And I think what's weird about these four games is that we've lost is the first quarter. We're usually in like we go. I agree. I think every single game we've done this and it was especially apparent with the Nuggets last night. We went down about 15. <laughs> but then we just came once we actually wanted to come out and play basketball we brought the game we tied it up again like we've done that yeah it every happened. single one of these games and we've looked fine throughout the first half it's just we can't Finish. we're not a, we're not the second half team yet and that comes with veteran leadership and that comes with defense defense wins you second half games and i hate i hate to wow nice doggy uh, out there yeah, man. <laughs> hey you're good um so, yeah, no, I just, like, if we – I think – and it might be a hard pill for most fans to swallow, but it might not be this year, man. It and might you know, It might yeah, take it might, one might more not. year of this group playing together. That might be all it takes. And that yeah. might be hard to swallow, but that, that could be it. You got to have a little patience. And I think, like, obviously we've been bad for so long, and, like, you can make the argument that, like, we're done waiting, but, like – you know, you can't, you can't, injuries are something you just have to work around. And it happened last year too with Cat. I hate to say it, but like, we're not going to be a really successful team without Cat. And that's just, it, it is what it is. Like we can, we can make, at best, I think this team can make it into the play game. I think they can make the playoffs, but in order to have that deep run, you need Cat. And actually, I don't know if you heard the injury news, but a lot of hand doctors are actually coming out saying that it's more likely that more likely that cat's going to be out four to six more weeks than what they had imagined. But that was kind of what Darren talked about in our last podcast, that the Timberwolves aren't very open with mm-hmm. their injury status for some reason. And they're one of the only teams in the NBA that's not. And I don't know if it's just, I don't know what it is. Is it a strategy maybe? Feel, it's It's got to be because there's no other way that you would just keep an injury from the public. But yeah. But now the cat's doctor saying he's only going to be out one of, cause like, I think it was like a week ago, they said it was going to be like three or four weeks. Right. So on this timeline, he'd be back in the game next week or two weeks. So that's a big difference. That's a month, month long difference that they're not telling us. So if more, most orthopedic hand surgeons are saying that he's more likely going to be out for six more weeks. I, I don't know why I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get why the Timberwolves wouldn't release that. Yeah. It it doesn't, it doesn't make, it doesn't make much, much sense to me there, man. But I don't know. I I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be as optimistic as possible. And it's tough seeing all the fans kind of jump ship, but 
you have to remember, man, like that's, that's not everyone. So we kind of had an idea for this video. We probably should have mentioned it earlier if people are still around for this far, this long, but um, so we, we got, we want to hear what you guys are saying. I mean, there's not many shows like this on YouTube. There's not many platforms like this for Timberwolves fans to, um, to kind of talk about, feelings. yeah, to express it. So we just kind of want to open up the comment section below. We want, we want you guys just to comment your honest thoughts. If you, if you've been here through this whole, uh, whole podcast, what you think about what, what Chris and I are saying, are we crazy? Are we, are we being too optimistic? What, what are your thoughts? And then maybe in like two days, we're just going to, we're going to pull up some of these comments and we're going to discuss them. We're going to be completely honest, what we feel about what you guys are saying. We're going to try to, going to try to hear you out, going to try to sympathize. And yeah, it's yeah. just going to be a good way for everyone just to kind of just get, get your feelings out about the team and just, and hopefully, hopefully we can, hopefully this made people more optimistic and is giving the fan base a little bit more hope. Cause that's, that's kind of what we're here for. You know. Yeah, and I think, um, well, I, I I guess some people didn't watch it through. We, we'll uh, we'll clip this last part and yeah. put it out, and um, we'll just say, you know, leave your comments below in the in the clip or in this video, this video or the clip that we're gonna put out, and we'd love to discuss it and kind of see where everyone's at and kind of take into account your opinions and let let our fans know what you think. It's a it's a way to uh, put your name out there and put what you think out there, and we can discuss it in front of a fan base. So exactly. I think it's a cool idea for sure. Yeah, it just gives everyone it gives everyone a shot because sure there's all these negative comments on every single Instagram po- picture they post, no matter what it is, even if it's like just a picture of like a, a jersey or something. There's there's negative comments there, but not everyone not everyone's willing to comment on a on an Instagram post or something. So like you know what, just yeah, and I think like hey. If you if you just want to comment, fire Ryan Saunders. We'll we'll talk about that. Like that's yeah. if that's how you feel, we'll we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely talk about it. And one more, one more thing, I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but every time Anthony Edwards wears his red shoes, he does not play well. I, <laughs> you I do, don't he, know um, what it is. I'm a big so I'm I'm a huge. I always notice shoes. I'm a huge. I've always been a huge shoe guy. Always my whole life. And what I noticed, I always notice these weird things. So, one game, D'Angelo Russell comes out wearing um i think he was wearing black shoes first half played terrible comes out in the second half he was wearing white shoes same with anthony edwards in one of these games he started out playing in the red shoes and then halftime he he switched to the he switched to the black so i don't know it might be that new adidas deal that he's just he's he's just trying to think but i i actually i did the same thing man i i would wear if i had a good game i'd wear those shoes until i had a bad game and then if i had a bad game i'd switch them up again it's just yeah and it was so it was so weird because like in the wizards game anthony edwards started out in the red shoes and then it, he i don't think he, he scored maybe like two two points maybe and then he changed at halftime and into the black shoes and he scored 17 in the game and then last night he wore the red shoes the whole well, yeah. game and only scored five so Why would I, don't, I don't i don't know that's what i'm saying if, like so so he's smart enough to change the shoes he's smart he knows that okay maybe it was the shoes so he changes the shoes <laughs> plays well why would you switch back to the no, red one? That was, was terrible. It, was it an equipment manager failure? Did the equipment manager forget the black shoes? I mean, is this a, is this something we can dive deeper into? Maybe I don't know. I I, I think I'm, I want to. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say tomorrow night you will not see Anthony Edwards wear red shoes. I don't. I do not think he will wear those red shoes tomorrow night. All right. So um. So if you, so, what happens if he wears the red shoes? You you don't. So is he? Does he like those red shoes so much to the point where? he's just like, all right, I need to have a good game in these shoes so I can keep wearing them. And he's just going to keep wearing them until he plays good. I think they look really cool on court. Like I think a color, like say you're wearing the navies. I think a random color is like sick. I think it's cool when Nas wears the Christmas Kobe's. I thought, I thought the red looked really cool with like the all Navy. I agree. Like, I I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's like, people think that doesn't pay, pay and tell them your high schools. Like you would change your shoes at halftime when you have a bad game. Yeah, all the time. And I, I would wear the same shoes until I had a bad game. And if I had a bad game, it wasn't me. It was the shoes every time. And I would bring, yeah, I'd always bring two pairs of shoes, sometimes three pairs of shoes to a game. Just like if I had a bad shoot around, switch <laughs> the shoes. It's always the shoes, man. And that as my, as stupid as that sounds, every basketball player knows that. And Malik Beasley, you notice that he, he's been wearing LeBron 10s. It's <laughs> the same color LeBron 10s for no, three they're years. Probably, like... They're probably the same shoes. And he's they kind are, of been, they are, and he's been switching it up a little bit now. But 
these dude, the players, like they might have all the resources. They might have a Nike contract, but they, they'll probably just wear the same shoes. And I've, you hear this with like equipment managers will always say this, so like, like weird guys like Tim Duncan or something are like, um, I don't know, but they'll always just wear the same shoes. And like Nike's trying to get them to test out the new models and they just won't do it. They'll just keep wearing the same old shoes because that's what works. Yeah. And I think like, it's, it's such a weird concept, but it like, you think about it as a, as a player, like it, it's in your head. Yeah, I don't sure. know. It's, it's weird. So I think like, and all this Timberwolves talk this episode today, I think the main the main key points were D'Lo has to heat up is mm-hmm. our first point if we want to get a win. I think defense has to improve. And I think Ryan Saunders needs to play the right guys at the right time. I think they're the big key yeah. points to this lineup. I think some bright spots heading forward. I think you're going to see Malik Beasley keep doing what he's doing at a high level. Nas Reed has been a great great substitution like for cat like he's as he's as close as you're going to get to a cat off the bench and he's played phenomenally i thought um you know i think um i think jared culver's had some good games too so i think we just have to build on that i think we have to give it some time you can't just say fire ryan saunders no that's and amazing. you know i think um i think kogi's coming back fairly soon in like a week or so so once we get a Kogi back, I think the defense improves, chemistry and leadership improve a little bit more, and um, hopefully we can get a couple wins. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna, I'm gonna predict a win tomorrow in Denver on their home court with Anthony Edwards in black shoes. That's 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 the key. If he's wearing the reds, that's not a win. We'll know we'll know right at tip off if the Timberwolves will win or not based on Anthony Edwards shoes. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, be yeah. on the lookout for um, you know leave your comments down below and we'll. Yep. Uh, Maybe we'll do that after, because the Nuggets play tomorrow. Maybe we can do that the day after the Nuggets game. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. I think that's. A, I think. I think that'll be a great, a great little, uh, great little segment for us. But um, but yeah, guys, thanks, thanks for watching this. We're gonna try to. We keep. We try to do this every week. Um, please, hey, subscribe. It helps out a lot. Like this video. That really helps out a lot. Um, and yeah, just, leave some comments, man. Stay optimistic. We'll, we'll, can't wait to see your comments. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great week.